you're close. This is close. This is a little bit too intimate for me. Mm, is that? I can't tell. It's been a long time since I've sat down and done one of these. Oh, oh, that's, well, that's, well, that is too close. Oh, I can't lift my arms. Oh, I, so I had my injections today for Singapore and Bali. This equals two dead arms. I'm not liking this angle. Let's, let's change this. Oh, no, not that. Oh, no, maybe that. No, not that. Well, no. Oh, that's better. We like that. As you have probably guessed, I am home from tour. Welcome. Welcome back to home. I'm here for a week and then I fly to Singapore on Sunday. Have I organised anything? No. But I thought seeing as I now have a little bit of time where life on the road has ended and I am at one with my flat, I thought I would do a little Q&A. A little refresher Q&A in the form of 20 questions. I thought 20 questions is a nice round number. And it also means this video is going to be relatively long and I, you guys seem to like long videos. And while I've been watching videos on the road, I've come to realise that I like long videos. I didn't think I did. Turns out I do. Favourite tea at the moment? I'm glad you asked. I'm getting this question done first, just so that the self-promo is out the way. I have a merch store called The Hopeful Shop, and the products on there are incredible. I'm really proud of them. I love them so much, but it's been the same group of products for a very, very long time. And the reason is because I've been waiting until myself and the team at IRL Digital had something really unique and special that we could then launch and we are there now. So first of all we have a poster that looks like this, I'm just, I have it here but it's big and you won't see it all in the screen so here is a picture of said poster. And then these next two things are things that I'm really really excited about. I'm excited about the poster but it's a poster, everyone does posters. Not everyone does postcards and tea. You heard me, you heard me. We have ten postcards. 10 uniquely designed hopeful postcards. Quotes from my books. That is the dedication to all that she can see, to the voices in our heads that tell us we aren't good enough. Do be quiet. 10 amazing, beautiful postcards. And then tea. Guys, guys, I'm selling tea. That's the dream. Speaking of the dream, this tea is called Living the Dream and it is strawberry and cream flavoured. Yeah! How's that for a segue? And then the other tea is good morning, good morning. It's great to stay up late. Good morning, good morning to you and you and you and you. The stagiest name tea you will ever find. But this, as you can see, I've, I've been at this tea. This tea is ridiculous. It's so good with a little splash of honey. I, I really highly, I mean, English breakfast tea, everyone loves English breakfast tea, but this, this is spectacular tea. The links to all those things are below, but to make it easy, go to thehopefulshop.com. From all the cities you have toured in, which one is your favourite? When I think of the Adams Family Tour in its entirety as a whole, my mind is always cast back to four venues in particular. Edinburgh, because it's where we started. Bath because I just adored that city and the theatre and it was really sunny when we were there and I just think of, I think of having a lot of fun there. Dublin, because we had two weeks in that venue and I was put up in a very, very nice flat and I just had a wonderful, wonderful time there. And Belfast, um, because I ate some amazing food in Belfast. <laughs> Did the experience of playing Wednesday live up to your expectations? Yes. Yes, it, it did. I think the combination of a vocally demanding role and touring on a weekly basis is far harder than I ever thought it would be because you're constantly having to move from city to city, which is quite strenuous when you think about it. You know, you're constantly lugging cases up and down flights of stairs. You're constantly packing and unpacking. You're always a little bit unsettled and you're always sleeping in strange beds in flats or other people's houses. And so you're not necessarily getting as much sleep as you would like. And then you're doing eight shows on top of that, plus press, plus making YouTube videos and plus writing a book. It, it, it was tough. It was really, really tough. So it was far more of a challenge than I thought it was going to be in the first place. And I definitely knew it was going to be a challenge. But I think I gave it everything I had. If Scott was playing Festa, was there an understudy to play the Emperor? And if so, why couldn't they play Festa? So you have principals and the ensemble. And then within the ensemble, you have understudies for principal characters. And then the swings. And the swings usually cover the ensemble characters, but sometimes the swings will also have principal characters they, that they also cover. 
It's so confusing. So Les Dennis was off sick, Scott covered Festa, Gavin covered Scott. Will you be missing the cold so close to Christmas when you go to Singapore? This is the second time that I will be missing the run up to Christmas um, in England because last year I was in Dubai for the run up to Christmas for Les Mis and this year I'll be in Singapore and Last year I really missed it. I really missed the cold weather, I missed the Christmas lights, I missed the Christmas decorations and shop windows. There was one shop in the mall in Dubai that had a Christmas display in its shop windows and I sort of lived in that store for a little while. What are the essential things you need to have with you when you go away for a long time? There's always my sort of like typical things like um, tea bags and honey and a kettle and my camera and my laptop and like the essential things like that. Um, but within the last week, I acquired this blanket, you will know where from from my last video, but I acquired this blanket and all of a sudden it's become essential. It's coming with me to Singapore. Having a blanket to snuggle up with in naps in between shows, there's nothing like it. How are you going to cope without seeing Oliver and Scott every day after Singapore? I don't know. I don't know. I haven't thought about it. I don't want to think about it. What movie can you watch again and again without getting tired of it? Mostly the movies from my childhood like Hocus Pocus, A Little Princess, Casper. They're films that I will never get tired of watching. I will, I will watch them on repeat if I could. Which prop would you love to keep the most? I think I'd love to keep the arrow because arrows just mean a lot to me in my life in general anyway uh, because my last name's Fletcher. And that crossover between me and Wednesday is something that I feel very um, connected to and so I think the arrow would be a nice thing to keep if I could, if I'm allowed. What has playing Wednesday taught you? Are there any qualities of hers that you've picked up along the way that you will keep? There's a line that Wednesday sings, which is get on board or simply move along. And I think I need to inhabit that more. Whilst I completely believe in self-improvement and uh, bettering oneself, and I know that I've got lots of flaws that I need to work on, um, if someone doesn't get on with the fundamental parts of me and who I am, they need to get on board or simply move along. Because I don't, I just, uh, as I get older, I realise I sort of don't have time to convince people to like me. <laughs> Do you enjoy conventions, book signings, or stage door the most? Um, I, if I had to rank them, I think I would say book signings, conventions, stage door. Book signings and conventions are places that I go to fully expecting to meet people, fully expecting to... Um, spend the majority of my day chatting and taking pictures and signing things like I go there expecting that and I'm there for that so all of my time is dedicated to that whereas stage door um, I go to the theatre every day to do my job to the best of my ability and it is my place of work so when there are like 50 to 60 people at stage door I'm not necessarily able to give up my time whilst I'm at work to cater to those people, which then causes a lot of stress and anxiety on my part because then I start worrying that I'm disappointing people and then people get angry at me and it just causes a lot of stress. I'd probably say book signings are my thing. Have you ever felt the pressure to lose weight due to the industry you are in? Uh, yes, absolutely. It's hard sometimes having a job where your appearance has to factor into whether you're right for a job or not. Sometimes that's really hard to deal with. But there's an amazing video where Emma Thompson kind of touches on this. I'll link it below because it's a really great video. I'm sure I've linked to it before. Sometimes there are roles where a certain weight and a certain size and a certain height is written into the character. For instance, Tracy Turnblad in Hairspray. Because part of that character and part of that storyline is that she is bigger than all of the other girls on the Corny Collins show. But when it's not written into a storyline or written into a character that they are a certain weight and size and it doesn't actually matter what they look like, that's when, as Emma Thompson puts it, they're looking for a supermodel and not an actress. And that's when you can kind of start to question it. Do you think Lucas is the perfect one for Wednesday? Uh, yeah, I do. The thing about Lucas and Wednesday's relationship that I love is that she's found someone that she can look after and protect. I think that's her whole thing. She is a very dominant personality, even within her household, like not even within a relationship. And I don't think Wednesday would cope well if she didn't have someone who she felt like she was protecting. And Lucas is the perfect person for that. In what ways would you say you've grown during the last year and is there something you feel like you can get better at? I could get better at taking breaks and chilling out and not feeling guilty when I do take breaks and chill out. <laughs> 
I really need to learn that. What were your feelings after the first show in Edinburgh versus the last show in Dartford? I cried after both. After the first show in Edinburgh, I cried because I couldn't believe I was playing Wednesday. And I cried after the last show in Dartford because I couldn't believe that playing Wednesday was over. I think I'm in denial that the, sh the show's almost at an end because I feel like I was in Edinburgh, I blinked, and I was in Dartford. I was so excited after the first show in Edinburgh because I was like, oh my god, I get to do this eight shows a week, every night, sometimes twice a day. Um, I've got this amazing group of people that I'm gonna love spending my time with and I get to spend the next like seven months with them and then it was Dartford. And whilst I know the saying, don't cry because it's over, smile because it happened, I do just want a little bit of time crying because it's over. If that's okay with everyone, because because it's sad and I don't like it. <laughs> How would you normally deal with gross comments on your live streams? It's really horrible to say that they just don't affect me anymore because I get them so often. So many people across the globe are sort of dealing with these really gross, disgusting comments whenever they put themselves out there live on the internet or in videos like this. It's mainly on live streams though, and just weird people decide to tell you that they want to see your boobs. Like, that's weird. And it's really sad that it's happened so often that I just go, yeah. <laughs> it's really sad that that's just the norm now. And whilst I don't necessarily see an end in sight just yet, we've got to keep talking about it and fighting against it and blocking people who do that kind of stuff. Because it's not going to end if we ignore it. How do you talk to people about things you're scared to talk about? This is something I need to learn because I am terrible at this. Whenever I've been in a relationship, and there's something I need to talk about that I feel slightly worried to talk about. I can only talk about it when I'm lying in bed and the lights are off and I feel like I'm not being judged and I can't see their reaction. It's so terrible. I need to learn to just bite the bullet and talk about things that I'm worried about. And usually I am good at doing it. It just takes me a long time to build up the courage to do it. What's the worst thing you've had to deal with because of your line of work? Ooh, um, having people not like you as a human because they don't like your performance, I find very hard sometimes, because it makes no sense. And just people getting angry in general. I've had a lot of anger sort of uh, directed towards me in my career. And when it's justified, that's when I'll hold my hands up and be like, sorry, I screwed up, I did something wrong. Um, but when when I find it hard to deal with is when it's unjustified and unnecessary that and and i find it harder when it's directed at someone else and i know it's unnecessary and unjustified i find it easier to deal with when it's directed at me because i can i know i can just go oh like this is difficult but i'll deal with it but when it's directed at someone else that's when my blood starts to boil and that's when i find it really difficult what would you say to people who tell others who love acting that it isn't a proper career i'm 15 and i get this all the time you're gonna get this for the rest of your life i I'm a professional actress, have been for however many years now, and I still get this. Saying actress is your career isn't like saying Jedi is your religion. Thousands of people have it as a proper career. Like, what do they think, what do they, what do these people who say it's not a proper career think when they go and see movies and West End shows? Like, what do you, what do you think that we all just do it for fun, as a giggle, as a laugh? Like, no, that's, that's my job. I do that full time. Basically what you do when people say that is you just go, <laughs> okay, and then prove them wrong. And finally, I know the year isn't over yet, but what's the one thing you've learned from 2017? I need to chill out. I need to sit down <laughs> and chill the f out. Cause one day I'm gonna die. Like seriously, one day I'm just gonna keel over due to stress. And that's not gonna be fun for anyone. Thank you for all your lovely questions and I hope you enjoyed this. This was a long, this was a long video. I hope there's still people out there watching this. Well, you don't have to watch it anymore because I'm going. Bye.